All right, students, obviously I am not here uh, at school today, but I wanted to give you a chance to get your learn check back and uh, kind of go through it, making sure that everything is correct. Make sure that you have a different colored writing utensil again, uh, because this will be something that we do look at and uh, make sure that you give it back. Uh, leaving the school today. All right, so I'm just going to go through these problems here again, uh, making sure that we have them all worked out and we can go from there. All right, notice that the absolute value sign is isolated. So we can just go ahead and start. It's 2x minus 1 equals 10, and 2x minus 1 equals negative 10. We could add 1 here uh, to this equation, and 2x equals 11, dividing by 2, x equals 11 over 2. If you wrote 5.5, that makes sense as well. <clears throat> Um, over here, it looks like I miswrote something, so it looks like it was 2x minus 1 equals negative 10. I could add the 1, just like I did on the last one. 2x uh, equals negative uh, 9 -er. and divide by 2, <clears throat> and x equals negative 9 halves. If you wanted to, again, 4.5. So both of these need to be here in order for you to do this. All right, remember... When there is numbers on the outside, we must just get this idea by itself, this absolute value sign. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Absolute value of 3x plus 2 equals 9. Now I can split it up. 3x plus 2 equals 9. 3x plus 2 equals negative 9. I could subtract 2 from both sides. 3x equals 7. Divide by 3. And x equals 7 thirds. If you wanted to, you could write that as a decimal. Just 2 Point three repeating right there. On the other side, again, we're going to subtract 2. It's 3x equals negative 11. Divide by 3. x equals negative 11 thirds. Uh, if you wanted to write that as a decimal, it's negative 3.6 repeating right there, right? So decimals or fractions are fine. Really not going to be that particular. But again, we do have this absolute value sign. It is uh, or it needs to be isolated. So the first thing I'm going to do is just subtract 2. And I come up with 24. Again, I need to move that isolated over. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. And absolute value of x plus 10 equals 4. One of the things that this video will allow you to do is you can just skip ahead, right? You don't need to watch every single uh, problem. Now I can split it up. x plus 10 equals 4. And x plus 10 equals negative 4. Subtracting by 10 on both equations at the same time, x equals negative 6. Does not look like a very clear x there. x equals negative 6, comma, negative 14. Do not put parentheses, no parentheses there. All right, last one, uh, or last three. We're going to notice that the absolute value sign is already isolated. So remember, with inequalities, all I need to do is not only uh, take the opposite, like I have been before, but flip the sign. So I could subtract 2, and that makes 5. Subtracting 2 again, and that makes negative 9. Notice this sign here. This sign means or. That means when I graph my strawberry and grape jelly, I know that they must be... I'm sorry... This is an and, isn't it? Maybe, there we go, it's an and. So when I graph my grape and strawberry jelly, I know that the arrows must be going towards each other. Remember when you graph something on the number line, the left-hand number must be the smallest of the two. Because it's an and, we're just going bracket negative nine, comma five with a closed bracket. Here we go, let's split it up again. Four X plus 10 greater than or equal to 22. 4x plus 10 is less than or equal to negative 22. We're going to move the 10 over by subtraction. 4x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 4. And x is greater than or equal to positive 3. Subtract the 10. Subtract the 10. 4x is less than or equal to negative 32. Divide by 4. x is less than or equal to negative 8. Because it's negative 8, excuse me, is the smaller of the numbers, 
we're going to put that on left. We need to know we need closed dots. Right here, it does say that it's an or statement. Remember, I don't care which one you get. You could get strawberry jelly or you could get grape jelly. But notice that when they go apart, our interval expands. We only need one type of jelly. We only need one kind of line. And so there that is. This is the one we actually have not seen a problem like this on the learning check, but I decided to include it after our activity that we did where you as students were repeating and telling each other how to work out those problems, right, when you partnered up. So we do have to isolate that, making uh, subtraction 8. Absolute value of x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 16. And now I can split it up, right? x plus 9 is greater than 16. x plus 9 is less than negative 16. We can move the 9 over. x is greater than or equal to 7. And subtract the 9. x is less than negative 25. Remember, negative 25 is the smaller of the two numbers, so that's an open dot. And because it is an and statement, excuse me, an or statement, I know that they're going to be going away. Oh, I love this kind of jelly right here. Open dot at the grape, and we're going to the right. Because the arrows go apart, we know what we need here. Is just an interval like this. So that finishes up 2B right there. All right, 2D, number nine. Which of the following equations have Which of the following equations have this one as an answer? Again, we could just plug it in, right? Most of you got at least two of them. It's A, B, and D. C is the only one that doesn't work. You got one point per um, A, B, or D that you selected, right? If you only selected two, you got two out of the three, even if you selected C. All right, so here we go. Factoring, remember... Factoring has been a key focus of what we're doing. Uh, really impressed at the way that you all have attacked this here. Remember, this is the thought process in which we use. If you have a different method, that's okay. One of the ways that you could do it is 3W and 3W. And at the back end, we could make it a minus 5 and a minus 5. Now, here's where some people could improve. I saw this right here. You had two of the same thing, but you left it written twice. You need to make sure it's squared. We're going to employ this thought process for every single problem after we check for the GCF. It doesn't look like on B here the GCF stands, so it's just 2x and x. And again, there's several ways to do this. We could try 5 and 3. And then as I check it, I get 5x and 6x, right? That doesn't work. So I'm not going to do this for every single problem. But we now know that the 5 and the 3 need, or let's at least try, to switch them. <clears throat> and so that right there would make uh, 13 in the middle, right? 3x. 10x, and there's 13. So it has to be 2x plus 3 and x plus 5. We know this is 3x and x. Again, we know it's 7 and 2 for the back end here. We just have to figure that out. Notice how close that number is. 13 probably means that I want the two biggest numbers uh, close to each other. So in this case, I'm going to make it plus 7 and plus 2. And that is what works out. So 3x plus 7 and x plus 2. Again, first thing I always want to look for, factor out a GCF. So this first one here, letter D, I do not have a GCF. But the one thing that makes it tricky is this negative 5 at the end. So here we go. So we're going to make it 2x and x. Um... 
And then for the negative 5 here, we know that it has to add to be positive 3. So that would make it be positive 3. Again, you could check that there, but it's 2x minus 1 and x plus 5. Factor out the GCF here. So, ooh, so we do have a problem that has a GCF, so we're going to take a look at it. What's the biggest number that could go into both? Six. And just making sure, yes, they do both have an X. So what's left over? I had 6X squared. Now it's 6X. So X is left over. 24X to 6X is just 4. So these are the two factors, or the GCF and the factor, that you could use there. One with just x as far as to the first power. These are hopefully just a review of Algebra 1, really uh, you know, dialing those in and getting better at that. x plus 10, x plus 3. Remember, the order doesn't matter of the parentheses, but what's in the parentheses might matter, just depending on what's happening here, right? So 3x and x. Uh, 1 and 8, 4 and 2 are some of the possibilities here at the back end. So I could have 1 times 8. I could have 2 times 4. Obviously, both of those pairs could be switched. It looks like plus 2 and plus 4 will work. So 3x plus 2 and x plus 4. One of the last ones, at least here on this page... Uh, when we're looking at it, we know that we're going to split it up. Again, this is not always the only way to look at this here, but I have a 9, and uh, these might be a 3 and a 3. And then if we're checking out here at the beginning, we'll just make it 2x and x. That does work, right? It does make 6 here and another 6 here. And so because they're the same, I must write it as the quantity squared. That has to happen here. All right? That has to happen. <clears throat> All right. Three more. Um, again, it looks like it's just x squared. So we know that we just have to have x and x. And because it has to multiply to be 9 and add to be 6x, we know that based on that, it has to be the same. These problems, we again want to just look for a GCF like always. And then just try to factor it like normal. Notice here, I have that, and it's going to be a 4 and a 4. Could be an 8 and 2, but notice that they have to cancel out in the middle, right? They have to add to be 0x, and so that's the only combination that will work. All right, this last one, wanted to spend some time on it here. A couple uh, steps that we need to do. The first step, if you remember from the notes, was to split uh, the four terms into first two in a group and last two in a group. So here we go. So if I have that here, it's these two in a group and these two in a group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a GCF in both. So, looks like we're kind of running out of space below here, but if I just have 5x squared, that's going to leave me with x plus 3. And then if I take a GCF out of the last two, it's a plus 6, and that is just going to leave me with x plus 3. This is the key thing. Notice that my red parentheses are the same. That is what must happen when you factor by grouping. And here is why. Because if I redraw those green parentheses, don't they have a common factor in them? In fact, they do. It's x plus 3. So it's almost like I can pull out one x plus 3 from both. Okay, I can remove the common term. And what I put in red here from both. And remember, it's not x plus 3 squared when uh, I remove it. It wasn't 6 squared, but I pulled a 6 out of both of them right there for that last two parentheses. So one of the parentheses is just x plus 3, and then the other parenthesis, it's just everything that's left over. 5x squared plus 6. I could distribute here, right? First off, this is my final answer. But if I distribute, you could see that there's the 5x squared. 
Here is the 15x, again, maybe going a little bit out of order, 15x squared, excuse me. And right here is the 6x, followed by the only combination we haven't multiplied, which is just 18 right there. So that's how you factor by grouping. All right, really good work here on some of these. I think some of the uh, less than sign may have tripped uh, some people up, but uh, in short, it's just a no, yes, and no, right? Just plug those into your calculator and decide if it works in both, it has to be a yes, but if it doesn't work in one, that's gonna not be helpful for what we're looking at here. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, number 15, when we looked at A, uh, we have to remember about these vertical and horizontal lines. Anytime that I just see X equals, or in this case, X, I know this has to be a vertical line. So think about this. My vertical line has to go through here. The reason it has to go through 4 on the X axis is because it says X and 4. Look at all of these points. This one is 4, 9. This one right here, 4, 1. All of these x numbers on these points have an x value of 4. That's how I know the vertical line has to fit there. So, I've seen other ways. Uh, as far as the h goes, I've seen somebody try to spin an h and then make it horizontal. And when they do that, that might help them remember kind of where everything is going. Looks like I've broken this graph up into four different parts. Which part is shaded? Well, it's only this one. Here's how I know, right? This symbol right here says greater, so that means shade everything to the right of the red line. And this symbol is a less than, so I want to shade below the green. And the only area of those four that is both is that bottom right. All right, really great job here with this. We know we're going dashed. So make sure that when you graph lines, make sure that you're graphing them as long as you can. Notice I took the entire um, graph here to make this happen. So negative seven, up two over three, up two over three, up two, one, two, three. And with it being a solid line, this is not as clear, but it does break up into four different sections. Like here's one of them. Here's another. Here's my third and my fourth. So I need to see which of those four sections need to be shaded. I have my red line here. All I'm going to do is decide, oh, yeah. I need to shade below the red line, right? So there are these two sections right here. These both are below the red line. And this one is below the green. So with that being said, we're just shading right here. This section right here is the only section that's below both of them. All right, moving on here, we're going on to the next page. This is one where we had to kind of switch it in the way that you were looking at a picture and just writing a statement of inequalities. Well, one of the things that I see here for the first one is that I see a V. So I know that there's gonna be a Y with an absolute value sign around the X. Notice that the shift, the transformation is just say down seven. So because it's down, I know it has to be on the outside and I know it has to be a negative seven. Look where the shading is. She bleh, see, sorry, how the shading is below the V on both of them. It's a solid V, but I need it to be below. The horizontal line, if you recall just from one of the previous problems, has to be Y, and it looks like it's going above the line at negative two, right? So negative two is kind of that number that we're looking at right there. All right, let's try this again. Um, this one may have been a little bit confusing as far as what numbers that we're gonna be using, um, but I'm gonna do this dashed one first. I'm gonna do the dashed one first, and it looks like it just goes, because remember, these are both lines, so y equals mx plus b. 
it looks like it goes through a y-intercept of negative 4. And up, up 1, 2, 3, and over 5. Up 1, 2, 3 and over five, and it looks like it's below that dashed line. Now, some of you, a lot of you said two over three. Um, I wanted to honor that. I may um, have just taken half point off, which was not as much um, as the other ones. Here are this one's for the red. It looks like it's a solid line, so I know that it has to have that equal to sign underneath it. it looks like it's going to be shading. Ooh, this is tricky. It's such a steep line. It's right here is the y-intercept. See how the shading is above that and not below? So I want to go greater than or equal to. Again, negative 8. That's the y-intercept. And negative 7x right there for that. All right, we talked a lot about how to improve uh, this section right here. But just finding the x-intercepts, remember that just means y equals 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 15x plus 56. 0 equals x plus 7, x plus 8. And that means that my answer for this one would just be negative 7. And my answer for this one would just be negative 8. So I have two answers here. Don't forget on the next one to rearrange it. Everything must be on one side. And when everything's on one side, 0 is what is left over. So x plus 10, x minus 2 equals 0. Again, my answer here is just negative 10 and positive 2. Again, a little bit more difficulty in the factoring here on number 19, but nothing really changes. 3x and x. I know it's going to be a negative 15, so I have to decide uh, where the negative is going to go, but they have to add to be a positive number. That means I'm going to try to keep the negative away from this right here. So that means that this is going to be... Or excuse me, I'm going to try to keep the smaller number away from that. So it's probably going to be a 3, and then I'll make this a 5. Um, I don't know about the plus or minuses yet. Again, you could just make a guess and uh, you know plug it in. But that's going to be 9x, and that's going to be negative 5x, and it does work. So here we go. Because it equals 0, I must solve it. Remember... Solving it just means you're finding the x-intercepts right here. So if you know the shortcut, great. Uh, if not, keep looking for a shortcut, and you could just write out those equations. Ooh, the x-intercepts word is back. Remember, that just means equals 0. So if I know that it's equal to 0, well, this is really nice. 6 and 3 over 2. And there it is. I have both of them listed. What happens on the next one is a little bit interesting because when we do this here, we have two of the same. And because I'm trying to solve it, it really just thinks about, oh, this is negative 4, but actually this is also negative 4. If you wanted to do what we had been, x plus 4 squared equals 0 because I had two of them. Wouldn't that mean I take the square root of both sides, which is 0? Remember, I made that point plus or minus, but it's zero. So positive zero is the same as negative zero. And there it is. X equals negative four as well. This is another synonym, right? This word is the same thing, and we could use it interchangeably for x-intercepts. We could use it interchangeably for roots, right? All of these words mean the same thing. So because I'm finding the x-intercepts, I know it's 0 equals. And 0 equals x plus 4, x minus 3. Because I'm at a stage where I can just quickly say negative 4 and positive 3, I should be good to go. Remember I changed this problem here, number 23? Number 23, I just made this 14 x squared minus 9x plus 14 equals 0, because everything's on the same side. x minus 7, x minus 2 equals 0. That means that's positive 7, positive 2. Right there it is. And when it says how many x-intercepts, well, look at this here. 
I have one x-intercept and a second x-intercept. That means that there's two different answers, right? The graph crosses at two different numbers. This is where I was saying this is another synonym, just the word roots. You must show your work. So the first thing I would do is just to get everything on one side. Notice I've done that. Then I could factor x plus 4, x plus 3. And remember, here's my negative 4. Nope, excuse me, negative 4. Ooh, I said that wrong, didn't I? Let me go back here to do this. Because it's minus 7x, I need x minus 4 and x minus 3. Now we have our answer. So there is the 4, and here is the positive 3. So that's why this has to be the final answer here. But you must show your work for full credit. All right, we're on to these story problems here. Scrolly scroll, here they are. Your math teacher tells you next week's test is worth 100 points, and it contains 38 problems. Each problem is worth either five or two. And how many two-point and five-point problems are on the test? Make sure you write a system to help you solve the problem. So number of five-point questions for the X, number of two-point questions. Because I have the total at 5x plus 2y equals a hundo, and the sum of it, x plus y equals 38, because there's 38 questions, and they either have to be a five-point or a two-point question. I'm going to go ahead here, and let's pull in Desmos. And so what it says is 5x plus 2y equals 100, and x plus y equals 38. So there it is. I have 8 and 30. Now, I really want you to be careful of this here. 8 what? 8 questions? 8 five-point questions. Make sure that you are not only labeling it, but you're telling me which variable it's coming back to. That means it's 20 two-point questions. All right. A much better job here with the perimeter. But again, the uh, there's still some people that are working on finding that formula for the perimeter. I'll show you that here in just a second. It says we need to find the length and the width of this rectangle. So this is the length of the rectangle. This one is the width of the rectangle. And so one of the equations here, actually what I wanted to do is, I wanted to say this next week test was 100 points and 5 and 2. That was this equation. Um, this one right here had 38 questions, and so that's why this one was really helpful. Let's see if I can do something here. Let's see if I can do this. Just trying to bring this over. So this is, I'm going to be highlighting a lot on this. All right. So the length of the rectangle. So it says the perimeter is 56 centimeters. So what that's going to tell me is the perimeter is always all four sides added together. Some of you just put X plus Y, but that's where that is coming from. The next one is the length is two more than the width. This is very tricky. Very tricky. We have to decide which way to add to. Again, there's uh, multiple ways, but essentially is it x plus 2 equals y or x equals y plus 2. This is what we're trying to decide. The length is 2 more than the width. That means I need to add 2 to the width to make sure that they are exactly the same. So here it is. There's my two equations. Let's go ahead, type it into D double des, mos 2x plus 2y equals 56, and x plus 2 equals y. 
13 and 15. So again, we're going to answer the question here. Um, we would say that the length is 15 centimeters and the width is 13 centimeters. All right. Looks like we're dealing with some age here. The sum of some ages, so it looks like we'll just say John's the first one. So X is John's age. And Y will be Jill's age. So it says the sum of 3 times John's and 2 is 54. So that's going to be this equation right here. 3X plus 2Y equals 54. And it also says right here that Jill is... So remember, when you're seeing the word is, that's another way for saying equal. So Jill is 15 less than two times John's age. When we say less, we need to know what we're taking less of, right? So I want to do kind of it backwards in that order. So now that I have it all set up, we'll just go to D double des, mos, and we say 3x plus 2y equals 54, and y equals 2x minus 15, 12 and 9. So John age is 12. John is 12 years old, and Jill is 9 years old. All right, that concludes uh, 2C there, but here comes 2D. Now, I will say on 27, I gave you correct answers uh, for a lot of different things, um, and it really dealt with this last equation here. So here's one of them. Anne is twice as old as Betty. We'll do that here in a second. Uh, Betty is 12 years younger than Charlotte. Excelente. Um, and let's see, what else do we have here? Let's go Pinksky, and it says in five years, Charlotte will be twice as old as Betty. So a lot of ways to interpret that last uh, part of it. But again, we know regardless, we need an X, a Y, and a Z, right? So we'll just say Z is Charlotte's age, Charbar. This one is Betty's age. And then we have Anne's age. So Anne is twice as old as Betty. Mm, twice as old as Betty. So Anne is twice as old as Betty. So that means I'm going to have to multiply the 2 on Betty's age, right? If it's going to be the same. All right, here comes the next equation here. That will just come from blue. Betty is 12 years younger than Charlotte. So there's several ways, again, you could write this. Betty is 12 years younger than Charlotte. So Betty is less, so that means it has to be Y plus 12 equals Z. Or you could have said Z minus 12 equals Y, right? Both of those would have been fine. This last one is really what's giving us some trouble. And there's probably a little bit of leeway in which we could do here on this. But it says in five years, Charlotte will be twice as old as Betty. In five years... Charlotte will be twice as old as Betty. So the way I interpret this, in five years, so that means uh, Charlotte has grown up a little bit. So Z plus 5. And like I said, Y plus 5 will be in the parentheses times 2. The reason that it's like this is because in five years, I'm going to take uh, Betty's age and multiply by 2. So let's see what we have here. Let's see if we can get a slider to show up. Some of you were making the connection that it was kind of hard to do to set up that slider. So Z plus 5, oops, equals 2. And then we have Y plus 5. Ooh. Let's see if I can set up that slider again. There it goes, yes. So now we'll be able to do this here. So equals 2. And then what did we say? Y plus 5. Yep. Let's do some others here. Uh, X equals 2Y. And 
y plus 12, y plus 12, let's see if we can get that here, y plus 12 equals z. Now we're just going to play it here, right? See how the black and the blue are getting closer together? Again, we could change that here. Uh, maybe we'll make it 50. Now, again, like I said, this is not the only way to make this happen. One thing that you could do, let's see here, is um, making sure that you have everything set up. Let's see, we're looking for Charlotte's age. So let's see here. Let's go 30. Nope, that made it more. 22 is closer. Is 23. How about 21? Oops, not one, but 21. 20. 19? It looks like that's where we're looking at right here, right? So Anne's age will be 14. So 14 years old for Anne. Seven years old for Betty. And 19 years old for Sharbar. Right? That looks like that's going to work out. Again, it looks like if I multiply the um, second number, Betty's age, by two, I should get, yes, Anne's age. If I take Betty's age and add 12 to it, I should get Charlotte's. And if I add five to both, so this means that this one right here is at 12 and uh, 24, it's times two. So that does work out right there. Tried to trip you up here on the order of these. Looks like X for my purpose is just gonna be apples. X would be apples. Y would be the old strawberries. And Z would just be oranges. So we're trying to plug these in here. The way that I read it, it says 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 1530. It says if we buy one box of strawberries, so 1y, uh, four apples, 4x, and two oranges, it's 1090. Right, again, I'm just coming up with these from right here. Two apples, that's this equation. Uh, strawberry. And oranges would be 1090. And the last one that we have here is just one orange, five apples, and two boxes of strawberries. So one orange. Uh, where am I at? Oh, there it is. Five apples and two strawberries. And that was only $13.70. So we have one more after this one. I don't want to delete the slider, right? That's going to be something that does come back here. But 2x plus 3y plus 4z oops, plus 4z. And then that is going to be what? Equal to 1530 equals equals 1530 right there all right so let's see what happens here next one is just uh 4x plus y so 4x plus y plus 2z equals 1090 1090 All right, and the last one, but def not least, 5x plus 2y and then plus z equals. Thirteen seventy. Thirteen seventy here. Oops. Let's see if I can get that out of there. All right. So it looks like, oh, right there. Did you see that? Very close. Um, just because we know kind of what it is, it's definitely got to be bigger than zero. Otherwise, there's no point in doing this. But it looked like it crossed really soon. So 
right there. Now, again, this is not perfect, you can see, but I might keep playing it. Ooh. And what happens is, and you could drag it to see when it does do this, but it's 1.2. That's the time when it happens. So a dollar. 50 for apples. $2.50 for strawberries. And $3, or excuse me, $1.20 for the oranges, right? I'm getting that just from the Desmos. All right, the last one here, old Kevin Durant, and some people might say that he is old, uh, is talking about just making shots here. And so X would be the number of free throws that made. This one is the number of two-point shots or field goals made. And the last one is the number of three-point shots made. So we're just going to kind of go through this. It said he made a total of 113 baskets. In order to make 113 baskets, he could have shot three things. Free throws plus two-point shots plus uh, three-point shots to make 100, excuse me, 1,113. Another combination here for this is this next one. Uh, the sum of the three-point and free throws was 53 less than the two-point shots. So if I have the sum of the free throws and three point it has to be 53 less than the number of two point shots so we have it right here the last one would just be this one we're talking about the total number of points 2032 so either those 2,032 points, so 2,032, they could have come on free throws. They could have come on the number of two-point shots, and I'm putting a two there because that's how many shots he made times two, and 3Z for the same reason, the number of three-point shots that he made. So here we go. It doesn't really matter the order. We have 2,032. We have a 3Z, a 2Y, and just a free throw there, right? So what did we say here? The second one was just Y minus 53. And then it turned out to be just X plus Y here. Again, anytime you're doing this, whenever you're writing it in, you want to make sure that you are double checking those as i say that i'm realizing that i did not get every single thing right and the last one here was just x plus y plus z and then it just was the number of shots he made now i'm going to go full screen here on this and what we need is we're going to be looking for some shots. You can see right here that there's the green, and then we've got to get them to intersect, right? Clearly not going to really move this much. Notice how small my numbers are. So, um, again, with a little bit of an educated guess here, we can see that they're getting very close, very close, very close, and they almost touch right there. Make it a little bit bigger here. Again, what might be helpful, and just because we know the number of shots has to be an even number. So we're getting closer and closer. Oop. So right there, I think it was at 68. 350, 362. So what was it, 362. So the number was 362 free throws. 583 was the two-point shots. And 168 was the number of three-point shots. All right, make sure that you are giving this to the sub when you're ready. Again, whether you watched this entire video or uh, you just kind of skipped around and did uh, what you needed to. Make sure that you're marking it, using it to get better. I do want to see it. Uh, either do it now during this period or... We'll do it during TI.